Grounding is one of the most important items in all the electrical world. You will find questions about it on all contractor or NEC tests you take. So in this lesson, we are going to look at two articles loosely related, Article 250.8 and Article 250.10. The first article is grounding methods and the second article is protection of those grounding methods. Let's start with Article 250.8 Part 8 with subsections 1 through 8. There's lots of parts to this article, but in order to properly ground equipment grounding conductors, grounded electrode conductors, or bonding jumpers, you can use one of four methods. But it really comes down to two things. Just remember that any device you use has to be rated or approved. And that's the two things that's most important. The first of the four methods is called a pressure connector. It is usually a ground clamp, acorn fitting, or other device that connects wire to rebar, copper plumbing, or gas pipeline. The second method is to use a terminal bar, which is a marked bar attached to a service panel, switch gear, or other larger electrical equipment. It is generally used to bond two separated electrical services that are already properly grounded. The third method is to use a ground bar with lugs for the grounds to attach to and the ground bar must be fastened using threaded nuts and bolts with a minimum of two threads being engaged. Make a special note here. The old code required five threads to be engaged. So if you run into this on a test, choose two threads. The last method is called exothermic welding and it, it's just what it sounds like. You actually weld grounded conductor to grounding conductor. This technique is generally not used and is a real pain but if the metals are the same type then it's perfectly legal. One method of grounding is specifically prohibited under article 250.8 part B and that is soldering. Solder shall not be used to bond a ground ever. End of report. Last, let's look at Article 250.10. This code provides that once you properly ground something, that connection has to be protected, especially pressure fittings. Very simply, your ground is protected if it is in a wall with access to it for a pressure device. If it is in an area that is free of any obvious potential damage or if it is buried. The buried part would apply to a pressure fitting on a ground bar that is approved for direct burial. And that covers Article 250.8 and 250.10. Thanks for watching. Comments are welcome and have a great day.